What is up guys? Welcome back to our UPA Week 5 Team Builder. This week we are taking on the Rosmalin Roserades, coached by River. It's got a very nice team. The team you guys are seeing in front of you right now, as it should be up on the screen already, is not my team. I just want to go over this really quickly. I had already recorded this video. This is the second take, because my opponent decided to make a transaction that actually had to make me rethink all of the Pokemon I was bringing in and my, and my sets as well. My opponent originally had Typhlosion on their team. They swapped it out for Golurk. Now, while this may seem like an inferior trade, it actually helps my opponent immensely, especially if they decide to run an Assault Vest set, as I do not have good counters to that thing. You can run an offensive set, Choice Banded. Don't have counters to that. Golurk is a very difficult Pokemon for me to deal with, and Typhlosion was a lot easier to prep for. So, in making that trade, he gave himself another Stealth Rocker, as well as giving himself a great tank and a very scary offensive threat to my team. As a result, I had to change my sets. The Once again, the screen you're seeing in front of you, this is my actual mouse. That's not my mouse. It's going to move right here, as you can see. Uh, we had uh, certain sets on Pokemon. Uh, and we had to revisit this and because of time constraints because of the fact that he made this transaction on Wednesday We were having our battle uh, on Saturday. Uh, so actually the same day that this video is going up um, Because of those time constraints. I do have a life. I have a, a job and stuff I had to quickly figure out what I was gonna do with the team, but I needed help so I said I seek help from another member of the UPA another coach uh, Immortal Mence, we should be playing him later this season, I think in about a week or two. Uh, really helped me out with this team. Really, thank you so much, Mence, if you're watching this. Thank you for helping me once again. Huge, huge help. He brought a team. I, As I expected, the goaler came, and wow, what a difference. We could not win that game. Like, it was extremely tough, and I realized that one of the biggest threats to me was actually my opponent's Milotic. So, before I go any further, obviously, uh, I'm just going to drag this window down, and you guys are see going to see the team we're actually bringing. And here it goes. It's the same team. We have exactly the same Pokemon, but we re reworked a couple of sets. The first set we're working with here is Jules, our Mega Deancey. Rocking <laughs> this set is flames, man. It, it took us so long to figure out between me and Mentz what kind of... Mega Deancey set we ultimately thought was best for this game and we decided that this was actually a pretty good fit Moonblast is our only offensive move because it hits pretty much the majority of his team actually you'll see his team come up on the right side of your screen in just a second it is made up of Bisharp which apparently my opponent doesn't really like uh, Milotic, Heracross, Frostlass, Wobbuffet, Wigglytuff, Aerodactyl, Gliscor, Amoongus, Golurk, Latios, and Persian. Wobbuffet. Before I go any further, Wobbuffet is a Pokemon that's extremely hard to deal with. It traps you, it forces you into going for certain moves, and it destroys you with Counter or Miracle. So I had to prep heavily for it. In my test game with Mentz, he did not bring the Wobbuffet. But most of my sets were made to where if my opponent did bring the Wobbuffet, I would be ready for it. So, this is one of them. If my opponent brings the Wobbuffet, I can set up all over it because it can't Encore me. I have Magic Bounce. It'll be bounced right back at him. So, Mega Deancey is here, not only for the Wobbuffet, but it also sets up on a couple of other Pokemon on my opponent's team. Namely, the Amoongus, which can carry Clear Smog to lower my special defense. Uh, but I don't expect it to, necessarily, because it has to run certain coverage for the blade. So, uh, there's that. And there's another Pokemon that I am anticipating being able to set up on some point at some point during this game. As you can see, we are rocking a Rock Polish Calm Mind set. I like to call this set Calm, Calm Mind, Dance, Deancey. <laughs> I know it's corny as hell, but it's because we are a calm nature. We're rocking Calm Mind. And we are rocking a dance move in Rock Polish, which increases your speed by two. It's a double dance set. So, Moonblast being our only move, we can hit the Bisharp and knock it out at plus one. We can hit the Milotic 
uh, extremely hard with special moves, even uninvested, as you can, guys can see that we are in our special attack. We can hit the Frost Slash very hard as well. Uh, we can hit the, we can set up all over the Wobbuffet. We can uh, Oko the Aerodactyl at plus two. We can uh, do a lot of damage to the Gliscor. I got to make sure that it has a little bit of prior damage on it, but I can knock it out from like 80 at plus two. We can pretty much wall out the Amoongus after we're at plus two because he'll only be able to Giga Drain us. He can't Spore us or anything because we're a Mega Deancey. We can not Oko an Assault Vested Golurk, not even close at plus two. So that is the reason that this set is the way it is is because it can take out Latios, it can take out Persian easily, but the Golurk has to be weakened at some point in the game. And if my opponent didn't have Golurk, I would have brought a completely different set. But because I'm going to be focusing on weakening that thing earlier in the game, I brought this set so that I can set up potentially the last Pokemon is my opponent's Milotic. Now, what I want to do to Milotic, because I fully expect a Dragon Tail set, which can't touch Mega Deancey, Scald to be able to hit it, obviously, Mirror Coat, because Mirror Coat is a very, very good move against me. Whatever I can hit on the physical side, he'll be able to shoot back at me if I hit him with a special move. And finally, Recover. I need to get that thing poisoned early in the game like as early as humanly possible or i can just straight up knock it out that's fine too i'll find other opportunities to set up with the ansi or i'll just use it as a revenge killer because it is faster than a lot of things obviously you got you guys can see we're rocking 263 speed this is enough speed to outspeed jolly bisharp and funny enough plus two is fast enough to outspeed choice scarf timid or jolly latios it outspeeds it by one point so this is the set we're bringing we're gonna try to set up. If I get up two Calm Minds before, uh, before my Lotic even attacks me, and if it fails to burn me, I will be able to Rock Polish up and sweep the game. If it has been poisoned. Once again, if it has been poisoned. So that's what we're rocking with Mega Deancey. This is a great set, again, to set up on Wobbuffet so it can't do anything to us. Uh, and I expect this thing to potentially sweep my opponent to maybe get another 4 kills this week. Which would be crazy because then Deancey would be up to 8 kills and 1 death. Would be one of the kill leaders in the league. So, let's move on. I've spent enough time on this set. We'll move into our Deblade. Standard Deblade set. Iron Head, Shadow Sneak, Swords Dance, Sacred Sword, 240 HP, 252 attack. Adamant Nature with 16 speed F. This thing puts in a lot of work against my opponent's team. As you can see, Sacred Sword hits the Bisharp. Uh, plus two Shadow Sneak does a lot to Heracross. It Oko's the Frostlass if it's not Sash. I can set up on the Wobbuffet once again. It can Encore me, but I mean, you don't, you do not want to Encore the Blade into Swords Dance. Uh, Wigglytuff goes down to Iron Head. It takes like 94 min, uh, from a non-boosted Iron Head, by the way. If it doesn't have any HP investment. If it does, then it's taking it a little bit better, but still not well. Aerodactyl, Iron Head destroys it. Gliscor, I have to watch out for, but its EQ doesn't actually do that much. Uh, Amoongus, again, all it can do is either spore me or HP fire me. Uh, Galark does not appreciate ta taking two Shadow Sneaks if it's offensive. If it's defensive, it's going to ha have a harder time taking me out. Uh, Latios, again, not taking two Shadow Sneaks. I don't care what set you are. I don't care if you're defensive. If you're defensive, you're not touching me. So, And of course, Persian. Persian can rock knockoff, which is something I'm worried about, but uh, we'll deal with it as it comes. If it's rocking knockoff and fake out and pursuit then Deancey can wall it pretty much and just set up all over it but uh our next pokemon uh this is uh this is the blade the blade is is a huge uh, issue for my opponent to deal with the only pokemon that it does not take on well is the milotic because if the milotic burns me i'm done i can't do anything with this thing anymore it's messed up for the rest of the game so that's going to be our Deblade set hopefully it works out again it's there to get off uh, residual damage on a lot of things it's just a wall breaker it breaks pretty much every wall that my opponent has on their team barring maybe the amoongus so it's really really strong uh weavile weavile is our next pokemon we're bringing a very similar set to the one we brought in week three against um against dork this is this time we're running a jolly nature i have to run a jolly nature guys and i'll tell you why because at uh with adamant nature at 252 speed i hit 349 which is not enough to outspeed latios and that ain't good uh also i wanted to outspeed the persian after a uh a potential fake out 
So I'm running 363 speed to be able to do that. It hits 361, I believe, but we can't get to 362, as you guys will see in a second. Uh, it jumps from 361 to 363, so that's where we're going to cap out. And I'm also running a uh, knockoff on there because it hits everything that's slower than Weavile pretty hard. Ice Shard at plus three, uh, or plus four rather, will be able to knock out Heracross before it even has a chance to hit me. Plus four knockoff is taking out Wobbuffet. I think except if it's Colbert, max defense, max HP, which I don't expect. Wigglytuff is the only issue for this Pokemon, uh, but knockoff is still doing a lot, followed up by our Ice Shard should be able to take it out. Aerodactyl uh, dies to plus two Ice Shard after rocks guaranteed. Uh, even if he's a slightly defensive set. Gliscor doesn't take the Ice Shard uh, at plus two at all. Uh, Amoongus doesn't take it either, nor a knockoff. Golurk, if it's not Colbert, doesn't take a knockoff. Latios, once again, knockoff. And Persian. Persian is the reason we're running Protect because I do not want to get Fake Out uh, and take like 40% from a Technician Fake Out, Technician Life Orb Fake Out from Persian. Have it proceed to switch into a Rocky Helmet Pokemon and then switch back in and knock me out with another fake out. I want to have protect on there just to be able to wall the Persian. The next uh, the next thing, of course, uh, knockoff. We're rocking Lumberry. I'll explain the Lumberry first, actually. We're rocking Lumberry for the Milotic so that I can set up on it. I can... If he's not rocking Dragon Tail, we'll scout his set. If he's not rocking Dragon Tail, we will be able to sit in on it and uh, Swords Dance twice, knock off, takes out uh, Defensive Milotic with knockoff plus Ice Shard at plus four, and then Ice Shard will proceed to sweep the game for me, as long as I have a little bit of damage on the Wigglytuff. That's all I need is a little bit of damage on the Wigglytuff, and I can knock out my opponent's entire team. Barring maybe Bisharp as well, uh, but Bisharp is more than likely not a bring this week. Doesn't have a very good matchup against me overall, but uh, that's going to be it for Weavile. Weavile can also sweep. Basically, I have three potential sweepers right there. Those were the first three Pokemon. My last three Pokemon are going to be different utility sets. Uh, so we have Mega Deancy that can sweep, Jules, Winner, and Weasley. And our next Pokemon is Clara. Clara is running a very peculiar set. This is going to be the fifth time we bring our Latias to a game. Uh, so it's getting kind of predictable, but I'm running this set. As you can see, we're running Safety Goggles. Safety Goggles is specifically for the Amoongus, so we can wall it. Ice Beam does a lot from a modest uh, max special attack Latias. It does like 40 to 49, I believe. Uh, for, uh, 248 HP, just so that I can pass off as big wishes as I need. Uh, as you can see, we're rocking Wish. We're rocking Toxic. This is going to be our prime Toxic answer for Milotic. We are going to Toxic the Milotic. We are going to Poison the Snake. All right, we are going to get status on it as early as possible. I don't care if I'm giving it Marvel scale. I don't care if it's competitive and I'm not. I am toxicing it. I am making sure that it is whittled so that Deancey or Weavile or the Blade can sweep at the end of the game. So that's Latias' biggest role is to be able to be a switch in for Amoongus. It also takes on, um, what was it? Wobbuffet quite well because of the toxic, because of the fact that we have two forms of recovery in Wish and Recover. Recover is for immediate recovery. Wish is to pass into things that do not have their own recovery, such as Deancey, the Blade, and Electros. I'll probably never be passing it into Weavile because Weavile is like a one-time use Pokemon. It's going to do as much damage as possible to my opponent's team and then just go down. That's basically what it's there for. Uh, and, of course, like I said, we're rocking the, uh, the two forms of recovery. It's my switch in to Amoongus. It's my switch in to potentially Gliscor if it's not rocking Fake Out. So this thing can take on quite a few Pokemon on my opponent's team. Switch into my Melodic. Uh, it's not faster than Heracross, which is a little bit of an issue, but if my opponent brings Heracross, it's more than likely Scarfed Moxie anyway. So I'm going to have to be very, very, very careful with that Pokemon. That thing can sweep my team if I don't set up correctly. That's part of the reason we are uh, Rock Polish on Deancey as well, and not just like max speed invested, is because of the... Uh, the potential of a Scarfed Heracross. So that's going to be our Latias set. It's going to be more of a Cleric for the rest of the team and also going to be able to hit extremely hard on the Pokemon that are weak to Ice, especially the Amoongus and the Gliscor. Uh, Golurk can also take quite a bit of damage if it's not Assault Vest, so that's always good. We do not want to stay on, on a Shadow Punch, though. That would really hurt, so that's going to be Latias. Our next Pokemon here is going to be Electros, and this is the first time we are bringing this Pokemon, as you guys may have noticed from previous weeks. We never brought this. Yes, we have an Electros, and you will see the next Pokemon. We also have an Armaldo, even though I have never brought, brought them. Uh, this week, we are running coverage as a physical set, and I'll tell you why. In my test game with Mens, he brought AV Golurk. I'm not going to shy away from it. He brought Assault Vested Golurk, and it's 
pretty much walled my entire core. And I was worried about it being Colber for a while. I didn't realize I could just go into my Weavile. But the problem is Weavile would have taken rocks because the first thing he did was get up rocks turn one. So that wasn't an option. I had to be extremely cautious uh, with when I wanted to bring my Weavile in. It actually put in a little bit of work at the end of the game. And if it would have gotten a crit on uh, the Heracross with Ice Shard, it would have won. I would have just won the game. So that's uh, we're rocking a physical Electros. The main reason is because of my Lodic's Mirror Coat. My Lodic will not be able to touch me if I bring a physical Electros. I can just wild charge it and be done with it. And then if it burns me, I can Volt Switch on it and make my opponent think that I'm a fully physical set and get off quite a bit of damage, actually. Even negative nature, I'm, I still hit 221 special attack. For a super effective hit coming from 70 base power, stab, is still going to do a lot to a Milotic, especially if it's physically defensive. And I'll be able to pivot out into something like Deancey if his Milotic's already toxic. So... That's one of the reasons we're bringing Electros. The other reason is because it has Aqua Tail. Now, Aqua Tail is able to hit the Gliscor and the Golurk, two normally very good switch-ins to Electros. Obviously, I could be running Hidden Power Ice, but if a Golurk is Assault Vested, a crit HP Ice does 32%. That's nothing. It's not going to do anything to that thing. So I have to rock, uh, run with Aqua Tail. The third move on it is knockoff. That's able to hit the Latios. It's able to catch switches, potentially knock off the Gliscor's Toxic Orb before it even gets a chance to go off, which would be amazing because knockoff into two Aqua Tails would, would then be able to take it out. The roll is like 40 to 45%, something like that. With Aqua Tail, it's probably a little bit wider than that, but regardless, that's, uh, that's our physical move pool. And like I mentioned before, we are running Volt Switch not only for the Milotic, uh, but also to be able to get out of a trapping of Wobbuffet situation. I do not want Wobbuffet coming in on me and trapping me for the rest of the game. I want it to believe that I am a fully physical set and then follow up with... Uh, I'll go for a knockoff turn one uh, when it comes in. I'll get rid of its item. And then I'll go for an Aqua Tail on tur turn two to do as little damage as possible. And then on the third turn, I'll Volt Switch out on his next counter and I'll bring in my Weavile and set up on him or my Deancey and set up on him or anything like that. So basically, Wobbuffet's not trapping this either. Wobbuffet cannot deal with anything on my team right now. It, it just, it's not, it's not trapping anything. <laughs> the only Pokemon it can trap is our next Pokemon, which is our Maldo. We're rocking. This spread is extremely important, guys, and I'm going to tell you why when I get to it, but we're rocking Stone Edge, Rapid Spin, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock. I opted for Earthquake over Knockoff because of the potential bring of a Bisharp. I know I said that it's more than likely not coming, but if it does, I do not want it setting up on my Armaldo for free. So I have to bring Earthquake. It'll do it like 60 to 70, and then follow that up with Deancey's Moonblast. I'll be able to knock it out. So I have to be careful about how I play around Bisharp. But if it does come in on me and tries to set up, at least I'll have Earthquake and I'll be able to do a lot of damage to it. Stone Edge is here, specifically for the Aerodactyl. And of course it can hit Heracross, it's my strongest stab move, it can hit Gliscor, Amoongus pretty hard, Wigglytuff as well, um, and Frostlass of course it's super effective on, but the biggest reason is, if my opponent decides to lead with Mega Aerodactyl, and that's his Stealth Rocker, if he taunts me turn one, I'll be able to take him out with a Stone Edge. If he attacks me turn one, a uh, a Stone Edge from a Mega Aerodactyl to a 240 HP, 252 Impish Armaldo never knocks me out. Even Adamant, it does like 90%. Now you could say, well, Aster, what if he crits you? Well, guess what, guys? When this draft started, we drafted two battle armor Pokemon. Pokemon that cannot be crit. And what has happened to me the whole season? I've been crit. Every time that I've lost a game, it's been to a crit. The second game that I had, I will not count that because I probably could not have brought that back anyway. But every other time has been to a crit. So, this Pokemon cannot be crit. If I lead with this against his Aerodactyl, I am knocking it out turn one. He might think that I'm a, an offensive set and not, not fully defensive, that he can knock me out with an adamant stone edge, because he more, he's more than likely going to run adamant because it outspeeds Weavile anyway. So he might think that he can knock me out with an adamant stone edge, but he can't. If we connect ours, we get rid of his Aerodactyl right off the bat. So that thing is gone. Now, I'm not saying that that's definitely a stealth rocker, but it's a potential to be. Because other than that, 
he only really has the Gliscor and the Golurk. Gliscor typically doesn't run rocks in most settings because it'll have a very diverse moveset. And Golurk, if it comes, then I'm probably not going to lead with Armaldo. I'm probably going to lead with, uh, let's say, Electros and hit it with an Aqua Tail and do like 50% and almost knock it out unless it's it's leftovers uh, on the second turn, on the following turn, but anyway, that's what Stone Edge is for. The eight attack EVs. If I put four attack in there and my opponent is zero HP, four defense Aerodactyl, there is a 7% chance that I don't take it out with a Stone Edge. I'm not risking that 4% chance. I'm gonna put eight EVs in there. What is the change? I could have put them in HP, sure, but I'd rather guarantee take out the Aerodactyl turn one. Of course, if it's not uh, fully offensive, then it's a little more of an issue, but uh, if it's running any kind of defensive ease, we'll know right off the bat because our Stone Edge would normally take it out. So that's that. The 8 speed is actually to be able to speed creep a Wobbuffet that has speed crept us, a zero speed Armaldo, which is possible because... Should Wobbuffet come in and trap us, it can do a lot of damage if it's faster than us. It can Encore us into Stealth Rock, if that's the last move we went for. And then it can proceed to switch out into a big threat like Bisharp and set up. And then I can't go for Earthquake and hit it. So I do not want to have him lock me into Stealth Rocks. If he should trap me with Wobbuffet, my game plan is to hit him with Rapid Spin as often as possible and continuously go for rapid spin until he gets annoyed because rapid spin does something like 22 damage his counter will do 44 and leftovers is giving us back about 28 so not percent i'm talking about straight up hit points so we will be able to slowly stall out the counters because counter has less pp than rapid spin rapid spin has 64 i believe counter is 32 so he cannot stall us out he cannot beat us and at any time i can switch up to a more offensive move if i see that he's in range of it obviously stone edge is eventually going to take him out i can count the rapid spin damage to see how much it's actually doing and then evaluate from there as long as he's not leftovers of course which i don't expect his wap to be i expect it to be colber if it comes but this is our armaldo set we also need rapid spin because we have to get ro rid of rocks the problem is my opponent just picked up a very good ghost I was gonna run Rapid Spin initially, but now it's a little bit more of an issue to run Rapid Spin. This is the initial set that I had come up with. This has not changed. Every other set that I had up until now has changed, except for, I believe, Weavile. Originally, as I was running Pursuit on the Blade to be able to Pursuit Trap the Latios. That wouldn't necessarily work because that thing can run like HP Fire or Earthquake, a physical set with Earthquake, so it wouldn't have to switch out. Uh, Pursuit's only doing like what? 40 if it doesn't switch out and then it can recover up on me dd in my face and then just proceed to, to knock me out so uh that uh, that i changed for sacred sword actually uh the reason being because this is another pokemon that i i do not want his bisharp setting up on and if he realizes that my move set does not include um a fighting type move he will be able to set up on me and there's nothing i can do about it because iron head's going to do zero shadow sneak's going to do zero even swords danced uh, Iron Head is going to not knock it out. He'll be able to proceed to knock us out with a knockoff or a sucker punch. So I have to have the Sacred Sword on there. It is mandatory. I can't rock without it. Um, the Latias also cannot touch the Bisharp, but I can wish pass into like, let's say, Deancey or pretty much anything. If I'm predicting him to not go for a dark move, I can uh, to go for a dark move. I can wish pass into Deancey and then knock him out with a Moon Blast afterwards if he has prior damage. So getting up Stealth Rocks is actually going to be pretty important, but I won't prioritize it at the very be beginning of the game because I know that my opponent can lead with Golurk and then I'm stuck with Rocks up on my side, which is not fun. Uh, and then also my opponent can lead with Aerodactyl and knock me down to about 10%, and I'll be recovering. And I'll be at 16 and I won't be able to outspeed anything other than maybe a Wobbuffet. So I have to be very careful about how I use Armaldo, but Armaldo is actually a pretty good physical wall. It can pretty much take on the Gliscor if it wants to, if it's not rocking, if it's not running status. So very good Pokemon. I'm looking for it to do a little bit of work. And if it comes down to an Armaldo versus X Pokemon situation and the only way that that Pokemon can knock me out is through a crit, I cannot be crit. So, I love Battle Armor, man. 
I missed Mega Slowbro for that reason. I don't think I had enough time to actually try it and, and use it properly, but uh, I feel like Mega Diancy just fits my playstyle so much better, and there's so many more things that I can do with it, so hopefully this set works. This is a crazy set, man. Moonblast, Protect, Rock Polish, and Calm Mind. Uh, did I explain the Protect? Yes, uh, the Protect is actually to protect against uh, Milotic Scald. If I go up to plus two, like let's say Milota comes in at like 30%, and I go for a Calm Mind. And then I follow it up with a uh, Protect, predicting a either a Recover or... Well, not a Recover, it would be a Scald or a Mirror Coat, just as a last-ditch effort to take me out. Then the Toxic Damage racks up, I get up another Calm Mind. If my opponent then wants to go for a Recover, they've let me get to plus two and I can still take them out. So, Toxicking the Milotic is going to be the most important part of this game. Pretty much. If I can do that, I can win this game. And I can win it comfortably. I can win it 3-0, 4-0. I'm not going to get overconfident right now, but I can beat this team and I can beat it well. But I just have to play correctly. I think I have tested for enough sets. I think I can deal with pretty much anything that's thrown my way. Uh, a special Wigglytuff, a Specs Wigglytuff with Fire Blast and Moon Blast can absolutely destroy my team, but I don't expect that to come. So I'm looking pretty good. I think, I think I've got this and I think I've got it uh, nailed down. Now, again, like I said, I can't get overconfident during the game. There's another player in the league uh, earlier today that uh, was playing and uh, lost and said that they were uh, not very calm in certain situations. And I don't want to put myself in that position anymore, uh, which is why I'm going to be ignoring spectators and ignoring opponent during the game because I do not want any distractions. I want to focus on my commentary and on my plays and really to give you guys the best quality of battle and try to win with this team. Uh, and also, I just want to stay calm. Even if something goes wrong, I want to stay calm and reevaluate and look at the situation and play from there on out. Like what happened last week with the Gallade. If I saw him going for knockoff, then maybe I should have kept my Megalodios, my, not my Megalodios, my Latias around and switched out into something else on the Shadow Sneak and not allow him to take out Latias, because Latias could actually still take a hit from the uh, from the Manectric, and I could Shadow Ball the Slow King, so it wasn't a losing situation for me, I just didn't play correctly. There were so many other things that I could do, I could set up more Calm Minds on the Fortress, but I didn't think hard enough. I was fixated on Scarf Gallade, because he didn't have leftovers, and I didn't even think twice about one of Gallade's most common sets being Assault Vest. So I have to be very careful, I have to be very calm, and I have to think things through. I'm not going to rush my moves. Last week was the first time we were playing without a timer on. I get very fidgety when I have to do commentary and nothing's going on. Uh, I'm not very good about at talking about my day, but we're going to have to try. <laughs> we're going to have to let my opponent take their time for their moves, just like we have to take our time for ours. So, this is the team guys, if you guys uh, enjoy this, uh, this team builder, be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe if you're still here of course, if you want to see the battle tomorrow, if you want to see any of the lives that I put up, any of the league battles that I, I put up, uh, there will be another team builder today coming out a little bit later uh, that is for the NBA and uh, our first week match against Kit in that, uh, in that league and both of our battles will be out tomorrow. I did say this in my update video a while back that I might be offsetting those days and trying to upload the NBA on an earlier day being uh, the team builder on Friday and the battle on Saturday, but that's really gonna depend on how much time I have during the week and uh, if I can even uh, schedule a day that works for both me and my opponent in time. So that's gonna be it guys again. Like I said, just, uh, just leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment, hit me up on Twitter. My Facebook's also in the description. I don't think I've ever said that, but my Facebook page is in the description as well if you guys want to go check that out there. You can com communicate with me there if you prefer that over Twitter. So that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching, and uh, get hyped, because we're going to try to win tomorrow, and I think we might actually be able to pull out a win. And, uh, oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. This is a division game. This is against a division rival. Both of our division rivals that are above us right now, we're four in a division. The two that are above me right now are sitting at two and two. River is one of them. So if I can beat him, and if I can beat him by 3-0, I will jump him in the standings. I will be able to, to surpass him because he'll go to negative three differential, and I'll go to plus three differential after that. I'll be at minus two, and he'll be like at minus four, and I'll be able to jump him. And that's going to give us a very, very good chance of coming back this season and trying to make it into the playoffs. So, 
That's it, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.